Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dee Reinhart with Illinois WorkNet. I am doing a TA session today. This is a special session. Uh, we wanted to discuss a couple of things related to worksite placements and payroll. So um, what I'm going to do is um, go to test and show you what we need to do with worksite placement. So the first thing that we need to do is under the tab that looks like a bulleted list. So we need to make sure that you have your work sites in the system so that they can be selected on the step that you provide. So now this is taking a, a, a minute here to add in or to open up for me. Um, one of the things that I suggest that people do is that you find several work sites and do these all at one time. Don't wait until you have a youth to place there. Go out and find the work sites and then add them. And so on the list, we have work site placements. You would pick your project, see who's in your list of sites from which you can select. This shows the total number of openings once you have the information added. It shows how many full-time positions have been added and how many part-time positions have been added. When you go to add customers, we don't do it from here. We don't do it from this page. We add the customers from that particular customer's career plan. And I will show you how to do that. Earlier today, I got an email from somebody that we were having an error happening with that. So hopefully, um we've got uh we've got a fix coming for you um but we'll see what happens um john you have to click an answer on each one of the questions so if you don't see your agency name in the first question you click not one of these and then you move on to the second one and then you happen to be in the third question. So you would click not one of these in all of the other ones and then click on LMW group on that third question. So try that because I may not remember when I go to send this attendance to Brandon. Okay, so now when you add an employer or work site, you click on the blue button and I do happen to be in test so I can go through this process with you. But we're not, we're not doing anything here. I have to keep telling myself that I love technology. I love technology. I love technology. Their days are supposed to add up, Sarah, not count down. Um, in the dashboard, there is a countdown section. Um, what we do have to do is adapt that based on what category they are enrolled. So we will have to uh, make that particular adjustment. Um, so somebody mentioned that your second question, uh, again, so as soon as somebody is added to a work site, the days are supposed to start counting right away. It looks like we do have an issue with that. And so I will stop the recording uh, when we're done and uh, we can go over a couple of those items because my programmer does happen to be on this call today. Um, and I'm not able to get to worksite placement to add a worksite. 
Let me try it one more time. Oh, I have to add a project, select a provider, and I'm going to add, I'm going to add a permanent employment. So I want to, you can look here to see who you already have entered. One of the things you want to make sure is if you've got Walgreens, you want to have each Walgreens location added. If you have something that has multiple locations or even two, you want to make sure that each of the locations is added and put some sort of differentiator in there so that you know what it is. Uh, we're going to add a new employer and we're going to add And there is a box here to check that if the employer is the work site or if there's a different work site. Uh, we need to look up uh, NAICS codes. It would help if I spelled airplane correctly. I still can't get it right. Then we need a phone number. I'm going to make one up. I'm going to make up an address. I don't know why I keep wanting to put an I in there. Now it's going to ask you for the SOC code and you can look up a SOC code. Oh my goodness, I did it again. <laughs> now, this is the spot where if you have more openings, like say the, the place where you're placing the youth um, took 10 and now they want to take 10 more, you would change that okay. item. Yeah, number. You would change that item number right here. So on the listing for the organizations, you would see the 15 here. You would click there and say, now they wanna give you 25 openings. You would change it here just by clicking on the number in the total number of openings column. All right, any questions about this piece of adding the customer or adding the employers. Nope, okay. While, so as I said, we do not want to add the customers here, although we have the add customers button, we need to make sure that we're looking, we can, we can pick, it will let you pick a person so if I go through here and I decide I want to pick S5 Galaxy, it's going to tell me to go to their career plan. And if you don't see that go to career plan, go to the career plan anyway. So that it takes you to the career plan, you can pick a goal, 
and then it gives you the different places that we have available. You enter a minimum wage for placement. Maybe it's the same. You're only going to subsidize what your contracts allow. And we're going to select a part-time position started. What date did they start? And this is going to be, I hate this. Um, and then when did the subsidy start? It's not WIOA funded. How many hours a week are they working on this? And then we update the customer service. And Avi, uh, what do you want me to do? This error is what they're seeing on production. We have to, me and Jonathan, we're gonna debug it more. All right, do you want, do you want an yes, F12 please. on this? Uh, yes, please. Do you want a screenshot? Uh, yes, please. I think, you know, we can it's showing the ad method or something. So just the whole thing screenshot. Right. Sorry, folks, this is much easier for him to see this as I'm doing it than having to explain it to him later. And then do you want the link to? Yes. All right, I got you a link and an image. Okay, so basically what this will do then is it will add the customer and the employment and it should start as of the date that you enter the subsidized start date. It should start counting. So Shannon and um, a couple of others of you who mentioned something about this, you should see the two days added to this total of 44 we've got a problem with this. So that's that's what um, I think Tracy said about it not counting right. I, I may be getting my people confused here. Um, so we are gonna work on this as well. Okay, Brandon's having problems. He just can't get into the webinar. Um, let me answer him, please. All right. Okay. Dope. Um, okay. So then once you have this, then you can enter, uh, once it's saved, then there will be a spot down here that will give you the follow up times that you're supposed to follow up on these people. So I can't show you that because this wouldn't save. But it's 30, 60, 90, 180, 270. I don't know that you're going to be required to do the follow up beyond the 90 days. But if you've got somebody in category two or three and they're working, I would stay in touch with them as frequently as possible. Do the follow up, notate it as a case note, just so that that information is in the customer file in case there's turnover or the customer leaves and goes to another agency, those case notes stay with them. And so if another agency um, experiences issues with that 
particular customer, they can see if there was an issue with a previous agency as well. Um, we do have this attendance piece that will be online so that if a customer is attending a workshop, we do have this coming forward as soon as another one of our programs that we're doing some development on um, is available. So this will be a really great tool. And once it's live, I will show you the whole ball of wax with that. Okay, the next piece that we need to talk about is um, let's show you the work sites, the work sites page. So what happens here is, um, oh, and Avi, here's where we've got an issue. So we've got a date of 12-7 to the present, and we have uh, zero subsidized days, but we have zero subsidized wage. So if you are adding a subsidized project for a participant, you have to make sure that you have a subsidized start date. So as of this moment, the only subsidy that this particular customer, S5 Galaxy, got was two sessions of 22 days each of stipend wages. Okay, Oak, so you just need to make sure that you get the subsidized wage tracked on that piece of employment. Any questions about adding the customer to the career plan? And I know it's not working right now, but that's why I had Avi on the call. Okay. Moving on for uh, uploads on this uploads tab, we need to upload the customer's timesheets that they are being that shows the subsidized wages. So we need to make sure that you're uploading those timesheets into the file. And when you upload a file, we now have categories. And one of those categories is timesheets so that if Nicole or Brandon are doing an audit on your agency and they're spot checking clients who have payroll, we need to make sure that they're in here. The other piece that we're going to start working and I'm not exactly sure when the expectation will be to have all of this. So let me send Brandon a message. We have a new document that we're going to be having you fill out. And this is not me. This is uh, Brandon and his bosses asking for this. And what we have, this is a, an Excel spreadsheet. And this is going to be a, uh, a fill it out. And I am just asked him, when does he want this? Wh what effective date did he want it to be backdated or are we just doing it moving forward, but it will require the first name, the last name, the last four of the social. When did the incentive or stipend begin? What was the end date for the incentive or stipend? And then we have a, a checkbox where you can check or select whether it was an incentive or a stipend. What was the total dollar amount? and how many subsidized days are included if it is a stipend? And then what's the description of the activity? So what were they doing to earn the incentive or the stipend? I will be uploading this document to the partner page after we are done with today's meeting. Okay, any questions about this form? I have one. Uh, we we don't do stipends, so we still have to fill this out. No, if you don't give out stipends or incentives, you do not have to fill this out. Okay, but if I but have, if you have provided 
a stipend or an incentive, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be required. And um, a bus pass wouldn't be considered an incentive, would it? Um, poss oh. Possibly. Possibly. I okay. believe the incentives were basically monetary rather than were monetary incentives. Okay. What does it say in your contract for bus passes? Oh, I don't have it in front of me, but I know we were going to provide bus passes to students who needed the money to get to work until they get their first check. Oh, that I think that's not necessarily an incentive as much as a supportive service. Okay. An incentive would be you sat your butt in that seat for 10 days and we're going to give you a hundred dollar gift card to Best Buy. That's, oh, okay. that's okay. an incentive. Okay. And I have a I have question. question oh my gosh. <laughs> so, okay. So you just clarified what the incentive is. A stipend, is that, are you just, is that the regular payroll? You just call it a stipend? Uh, a stipend would be, uh, so the difference between an incentive is you're not actually paying them. It's more of a bonus. A okay. stipend would be something to the effect of, um, oh, somebody had a really good one. If they, um, if they attend five days out of the week, speak up if this is your project five days out of the week on time and they pay attention and are there all day long they get a hundred dollars that's us shannon okay so go ahead and tell what what it is that you do so our category two youth are in a um a carpentry training program and so every day that they attend they receive a 20 dollar stipend if they're on time and pay attention, like Dee said, at the end of the week, it's $100. Um, and so it's deducted for when they're being late or if they are absent or if they get tapped out for the day, um, if that answers your question. Okay, and do your youth get paid separate from that? So to begin our program, they start their course and they do stipends. After that, they're entered into a 15 week internship where they earn a wage. So then they're paid by the, by the hour, if that makes Okay, sense. okay, I got so, it. So Daryl, the stipend is more for classroom rather yeah. than actual work. Because, well, I'll wait, I guess I'll wait to after the recording. I just, I have- Well, don't ask me that, about a particular person. No, it's not a particular person, but I haven't. So we were going to give stipends to those who completed a credential. This is separate from their hourly wage, but I've kind of held back on giving it to them because I didn't know how to document it in Illinois work now. Uh, to me, to me, and you might want to clarify this with Brandon, but to me, if they earn the credential, to me, that would be an incentive rather than a stipend. Okay. Does anybody else agree with me about the definition of that? Yeah, uh, this is John Long. I just had one question on that. Uh, we give out the incentive based on meeting benchmarks. Say if you completed uh, uh, the 101, uh, then you get, you get uh, you get you get money for uh, completing the 101 employment 101 and we don't do it on the days but we do it on whether they complete the job or not so yeah I don't know that, they, that would be an incentive to me right okay. also um i i just want to say i think the way we've kind of used incentive versus stipend this is janice mitchell um has been incentives pay or incentive um, financial incentives are not uh, passed through payroll in the sense of well they can be passed through your payroll but there's no payroll taxes but stipends you do have the, the it's taxed you put that in with the payroll um, and I think like when we're saying that if you 
you know, if, if you attended four times uh, all of the employment readiness skill trainings, and after your fourth one, you earn $200, then those $200, there's no taxes taken out of it as an incentive for attending, participating, and so on. But if we say, you know, uh, this is required and you, you do get a bonus for doing this and you will be paid that bonus in the form of a stipend, then the stipend is actually built in those five hours along with your pay time or your hourly pay. And, so, and we were made cer uh, certain of that from our um, CPA office so that we would make certain, you know, when it's the, the end of the year time and 1099s and everything that we don't get people, you know, caught up for the wrong thing. Okay, so does anyone on this call who does category one for the summer, because this is my first time doing the summer. I attended a, a youth summit for those trying to recruit youth. And I believe someone on this call was there. And I believe they said they don't tax the youth over the summer, that they get checks so that they can get their full, you know, money earned over the summer. Mm -hmm. Is we that tax not we're category one only, and all of our youth from 16 to 24 are taxed through payroll. Yeah. And they do receive the W-2 at the end. And Oh, and okay. Well, yeah. I think I'll align with that. But <laughs> the again, incentives are totally different, and we pay them different with that. So incentives do not need to be taxed. No. Well, and those need, are based on milestones. To, you need to check with your uh, accounting people. Because what, what ends up happening, anybody that earns over $600 mm -hmm. gets, gets a W-2. Mm -hmm. And if that, you have to be able to verify that it's an incentive versus seat hey, time or wages. So you need to check with your accounting agency and your auditing agency okay. as to how they want to handle this. Okay, any questions about this form? I, I have one more, Dee. Yes, ma'am. Um, our students are done uh, collecting stipends. Do I need to report their stipends week by week or can I report them in total? Um, let, me, let me read what Brandon sent me by text and see, um, and I guess I can just, read this right now so that it's read into the video. It says, please tell them any information from quarterly meetings, TA sessions, and emails from DHS needs to be shared with other staff members at their agency who were not present. In some cases, such as the PPR, it is clear that staff members are not communicating with each other within their agency. So please take that into consideration. And he is wanting the he's wanting the incentives and stipends by the end of the month, June 30th at the latest, so that um, I, I'm, I'm assuming Shannon, if you are done giving out stipends for everybody, you could probably do one document. Um, let me let me verify. So this form isn't for category one, it's for FY21 category two. Uh, yeah, well, I'm not sure. Let me verify that as well. Um, how far back do you want the agencies to begin with the incentives slash stipends? Um, and all categories, all right. And then the other thing that he also just said uh, is, 
if y'all are emailing Brandon, Nicole, or me, we need to make sure that it's clear what agency you're with. And I know, I know I get really, I get really lost sometimes. Some of you have email addresses that say like, like what the agency is at the end of your email. Some of you use Gmail. Some of you don't have an email signature that has a phone number or email address in it. And to me, that is totally frustrating because there are times where I just want to pick up the phone and call you because your email needs some clarification or I need something right now and I can work on it. And if I don't have a phone number or an email, especially if you're working off site right now and you're using your cell phone, I need that in an email signature. And if we need to do a lesson on how to update email signatures, I am happy to do that as well. But please, please, please add an email signature, what your agency is, and a phone number that I can reach you or that Brandon or Nicole can reach you. That is, that's very crucial for us to be as expedient as possible in getting answers to you. Okay, um, moving on for now, we'll come back to this as soon as I get a text message back. <clears throat> you will upload this document to the uploads on the resources page. Um, on, oh, sorry, I'm like lost here. I got too many tabs open. So on this uh, resources where the tab is, uh, the folder that's partially open, you will upload that document that we just showed you that Excel document with the incentives and stipends to this files upload. You'll pick your program, you'll pick your agency, you'll upload the file and tomorrow this option will be here for incentive stipends paid because Avi will get that uploaded to production overnight. But you'll pick that item and then you'll upload the document. And if you're uploading it a month at a time, or if you're uploading the whole program to date, put that in the description. And then you click upload and the file will go. And as I said, I will upload that document to the partner page as of uh, by after we're done with this uh, TA session today. Um, Okay, and then Brandon answered me and he said that all categories need to be uploaded that is part of the contract and it should be any incentives or stipends from September 1. So if you've paid out any stipends or incentives since September 1, break it down by category and then upload that. Um, in fact, what I think I'll do is I will modify this form and add a category column in there before I upload it. I'll, in fact, I'll do it right now. And I will put, um, I will put one of these drop downs in so that you can just pick instead of having to type. Excuse me, Dave. Yes, sir. This is Sam from Dream. Uh, did you say uh, that we could just upload one document that lists all the stipends we've paid, or do we have to if, do it? If you're done, if you're done with them, yes. Okay. And I'm assuming this is due June 30th? Yes. So, so for example, Shannon said she was done giving out incentives. So as long as she's done, she can upload it and she's done with it. Okay, where else did I need to go? Okay, payroll. We need to talk about payroll. So also on the work site placement tab, and I will get to questions in the chat in just a couple of minutes. Under the payroll tab, on the worksite placement. So it's the item that looks like the bulleted list. And just to let you guys know, we have 
68 people of 76 who have answered the attendance poll. Please make sure that you get that done. So John, you still haven't attempted to do that. Okay, on the payroll, there are uh, worksite placement instructions. We need to get some payroll instructions uploaded here. Um, you would select your project. You would select your agency and then you can filter and it will show you the payroll that you have uploaded into the system. Um, on the payroll that has been uploaded into the system, if you view export that payroll, you can see what's already been added into there. If there is an issue, I can get the payroll eliminated from the system. And I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things about why you would want to do that. But otherwise, this is how you apply the payroll. So if we add the payroll, we put in a start date. I'm gonna do 1-1 of 2021, and I'm going to do to 1-31 of 2021. And I'm going to download the payroll template. One of the things that you do not want to do you do not want to. Uh, you do not want to add people into the payroll that have zero hours worked. So if they either haven't started yet or they are done working, you want to make sure that you delete them from the list, and this separates them out. So for example. All of these people here are probably DHS youth or CSYEP people. So I'm going to just go in and delete them from the document. And then I'm going to, I'm going to do that the same way. You can also filter your data at the top. You can uh, click on the column and you can go to data and sort the data um, by Sort the data by, why isn't it letting me sort? Oh, I got to do the whole thing, sorry. So I've got to pick the whole document. Why is it not letting me sort? All right, so I collected, I selected all of the data. I'm clicking sort. I'm going to click by enrollment category and I'm going to select A to Z and sort so that it puts all of my um, category people at the top. I can delete the rest of them. So then if I'm looking at this list and I see that Shelby o Owen has five different jobs, but I know for a fact that uh, Shelby didn't work at these in January, I can delete those. So now I have my list of payroll people for the month of January, and I can go in here and I can say um, how many hours they worked and get this entered in here. Oops. <clears throat> and then if they have a subsidized wage, this is the other important piece. If they have a subsidized wage, that will transfer in here. If they do not have a subsidized wage, Maybe you did something wrong and you didn't add the subsidized wage for that person. So you need to go back and check their profile and that placement piece because they, if they are getting added for subsidized wages, you want to make sure that that item is in there. 
any questions about the actual payroll form? Uh, D. Yes, sir. Just uh, can you sort of uh, review that adding payroll again, does the steps to add the payroll again, just quickly? You go to the worksite placement tab. You click on the payroll tab. Now there are instructions here. So if you get those two pieces done, we've got instructions. And you can also go back and watch the video once I get it posted by mm -hmm. tomorrow. Okay. Okay. I'll and then back. you got to pick your project. You got to pick your agency. You enter in the payroll period and you download the payroll template. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then once you have your payroll template done, this has to be saved with this naming convention. This is one of the only documents that has to be saved this way because otherwise it will not filter properly into the system. So you cannot change the name of this document. And then you would save this and then you would upload that payroll here, choose the file, and upload. Mm -hmm. There is another piece. Oh, it didn't like it. Avi, what do you want? Yeah, I think uh, we need to check that day because you know uh, by looking at the 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 message, it looks looks like in the database we have like you know same key twice. So I have to right. check that. All right, I just put the link in Teams. Okay, uh, so then uh, once that fixes, then we would have the payroll submitted here. And again, if you have made a mistake, uh, we need to make sure that people are being entered through the worksite placement. We need to make sure that we're not entering zeros. Uh, Brandon has indicated that he wants payroll uploaded at least monthly. Some of you choose to do it every time you do payroll, that's fine, but we need to have it done at least monthly. And I noticed I was looking at one agency's payroll. They had, there were five different payrolls for this exact same time period. And it was different employers on each payroll. So we want one payroll per agency per time that you upload it. And then the stipend and incentive document. And um, oh, oh, Brandon changed his mind. You only have to upload the incentive stipends since April 1st because he has all the PPR documents. I have a question, Dee. Yes. Actually, two questions. So for the timesheets um, that we have to upload in the upload section, can we use the um, same spreadsheet that we use to upload payroll or does it have to be a different? Timesheet? What they want to see on the timesheets is the actual recording of time. So okay. did they work from eight o'clock in the morning till noon and then one o'clock till four o'clock? Okay. That's, that's what the timesheet piece is supposed to be. Okay, and then my second question, um, I noticed that you mentioned no zeros on the payroll sheets. So if someone say um, an apprentice was sick that week and they didn't work that week at all, and so they have zero hours, so do we just delete them off? off okay. Of this particular payroll document, you would, so like if they, if this was a zero here and this one was a zero, just go in and delete them out. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.
Let, I, okay. I have to follow up with that. So <laughs> we have a Google shared timesheet document with each of our work sites where they put in the hours of the apprentice that they work, but it's not minute to minute. It's like on this date, they worked 4.5 hours or six hours. That'll work. That'll work. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you were finished. I'm sorry. Oh, he was just joking. Oh, okay. Is it okay if we use time cards? If we upload, if we copy time cards and upload them? Yes. Okay. D, this is yes. only for ones that we are stipending, right? Like that we are subsidizing, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. That, I like those yes questions. <laughs> All right, okay, so now I am going to go into the chat and see what I got going on in here. I got 68 of 72 people that have done attendance. So please, please, please check the attendance for me. Um, I already answered that one. For category one, I believe it's been stated that we don't need to do a career plan with youth would we still have to enter it on this page? Yes, that is a hard yes. Um, we received the same error message when accessing the career plan earlier today. Okay, I I'm, think I've got somebody working on that. It was related to entering a goal. Okay, so that, that whole piece is broken. So um, Avi, if you wanna note that, Ladon from Of Color, Inc. said that it also showed up on an adding a goal. Shannon, the career plan was not working during enrollment today from Employment 101. Um, Shannon, how was it not working? So during Employment 101, when it was asking. Oh yes, yes, we know that. Okay, oh, I got yeah. I got somebody working on that. So none of the career plan pieces are working when they're in Employment 101. Um, once we get this fixed, the youth or you can go back and update those career plan items without having to go all the way. They will have to go through Employment 101, but they won't have to redo the, the learning modules and the quizzes and stuff. They just have to go from career plan item to career plan item and make okay. those updates once we get this fixed. So I have a question um, and you may not have the answer right now, but the students who were here today, since we couldn't complete Employment 101, we rescheduled them to come back tomorrow. Should I just uh, cancel that? Yes. Okay, give thank me, you. Give me at least until Friday, just in case. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, Business cards are supportive services, Ladon. But, oh, it says bus cards, duh. <laughs> yes, bus cards are supportive services. Bus pass is probably considered supportive service, supportive services. How frequently do we have to send that new incentive stipend report? I'm gonna, I'm going to kind of go out on a ledge here and say that we need it through June 30th and then probably monthly after that. Um, I can get that. Let me send a message off. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> um, by, okay, so Luis, I think you meant the incentive document. Uh, June 30th was the answer for that one. If that's a different document, let me know. If the youth is receiving a wage, they cannot receive a stipend. No, not at the same time. They cannot be getting stipend and wage, sub subsidized wage at the same time. 
they can be making a unsubsidized wage and a stipend, but that's going to be tough. Um, Bernard says, I may have missed this before as I logged onto the meeting a couple minutes late. If we have employers complete worksite agreements digitally, is there a way to upload and have the information excerpt, excerpt oh, I can't say the word, from the completed worksite agreement or does the information need to be entered manually? You can upload the worksite agreement there is no way to get the information from the worksite agreement into the form. You have to do that uh, um, manually, okay? Shannon said, yes, I don't remember what you said yes to. <laughs> um, will that incentive be uploaded to Illinois WorkNet? If so, how, Sarah, did I answer that question? How frequently do we have to send the new incentive stipend report? Uh, Brandon just answered me monthly after the June 30th deadline. Uh, so we need April 1 to June 30th uploaded by June 30th. And then monthly after that. The, the document will be uploaded to the partner page. And let me find. Ah! All right, I will be uploading the document, full list of resources. I will be uploading it to this page. In this middle column, it will probably go at the bottom of this documenting customer status section. I will probably put it right in here underneath the services report. Uh, Daryl says, previously we uploaded incentives under stipends. Should this be corrected? Is this something we still need to do in conjunction with this new? Um, Daryl, explain a little bit. So previously there was a section and I remember struggling with it a little bit where we added our stipends or incentives. At the time we labeled them stipend. And I remember we had to go back and forth about that, but it was a place where we uploaded that information on Illinois WorkNet. Okay. And so we haven't done any incentives since then, but is that something we'll still have to do in conjunction with this form or is this form going to erase that to do this? You still need to you still need to put it on the customer's profile. Um, let me show you where I think where I think we may have gotten you doing that if I can mm -hmm. get there. Uh, okay. Okay, so on the career plan, and this is a category two person, and I don't know who heard that you didn't need to do career plans for category one, but I think you're mistaken. And you probably ought to get yourself together because there's a whole lot of pre-populated steps in there. So right here, um, Daryl, we changed this stipend incentive-based experience to stipend and then an other option for incentive only. I'm not sure that I got this changed in 
test right now, but there are two different steps in production, one for stipend, one for incentives. And so then if you're entering the information in here on this step, there's a dollar value of service. And when you enter the dollar value of service, it's going to be, um, it's, it's going to have this box checked right here. This service counts toward the maximum allowed subsidized days for the individual. And we put when the start date was, when the end date was, and how many hours. Now, I think it was Shannon. Tell me again if I'm wrong here. She was putting them in five days at a time so that the weekends didn't count toward the subsidized days. Yes, that was me. Okay. So that's up to you. I don't know how long your stipend items are going, but that, that sounded like a really good idea to me. All right, Daryl, you still got any questions? Uh, I think we'll, I'll probably have to wait till you're done recording so you could pull up something specific. Okay, all right, I can do that. All right, let's see here. Our previous, is there a uniform? Okay, so Bernard, did I answer your question about the uniform payroll document? Yes, if I understand correctly, that there should be two separate documents. One should be for timesheets um, that just records time. And then the other should be for payroll. And that those will be, that the payroll document situation we can find through the worksite agreement. And that should be uploaded there. Is that correct? The payroll document is uploaded through the worksite placement. Yes. That's where that goes. And that's where it, gets downloaded or uploaded mm -hmm. and the time, the recording of time goes on the customer's profile on their uploads tab. Okay. Um, and then it, we're free to choose for our time keeping mechanism. We're free, we're free to choose whatever format we want to use for that. Yes as long as you can track it and prove it to, to whoever's monitoring your stuff. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so now we're down to youth that are returning from the CYEP program are not able to complete an IYIP category two application. When will the system allow them to complete so they may start an apprenticeship? Um, I can't see who that, Andrea, what agency are you with? Are you talking to me, Andrea? I think so, employee, Andrea. Andrea employee eight. Connections. Okay. Um, okay, so once we get off the recording, the, the one piece, the one piece that we need to know is, are they still associated with a different agency where they closed out of their previous agency. That's one factor that will halt them from being able to complete an application. If there is no, um, if they were closed out before, like say they were your student and you closed them out, then I need that name and email address so that I can get this to Avi. It's one of the reasons why he's on the call today. So did you try it today to see if it worked or not? I have not tried it today. I did um, yesterday and then last week as well. So what I'll do is um, forward you a list of names with their emails because they were all enrolled in a, our, our program, employee. Your own program. program. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So, um, Avi, when did you push that fix for the application? Was that the Friday push? Yes, the Friday evening, I guess. So then if she tried yesterday, then apparently it didn't work. So, and uh, um, Andrea Hempel, you need to double check that you closed them out. 
Yes, I've closed them out. Okay. Um, probably a couple months ago when we had that discussion about closing some of the um, DHS. Um, so they are closed out. So I'll, I'll need to send you their their email address and their names. Okay. All right. Thank you. Right. Thank you for answering that. You're welcome. Uh, Makia, yes, they can go to summer school and you can still provide services for them. Um, Peoria is gone. Um, a random enrollment question. Is it possible to transfer participants between categories once they've already been enrolled? We have participants who initially wanted to pursue employment, but are now moving towards certification. So we want to transition them from category. Daryl, mute yourself. Daryl, mute yourself. You are, you are. Sorry, sorry. Um, so we would want to transition them from category two to category three. Would these participants have to exit and re-enroll? No, as long as you, no, as long as you move them, then um, their enrollment should change easily. We just have to double check that their uh, subsidized days shift from the 270 to three, to the 365. Um, let's see. Can we delete an employer work site if I added it twice? Yes, you can. It's storming in Urbana, lost internet connection, send back in via phone. We only have th count three attendees for. Okay. Um, same problem with returning. So, Mary, have you? Have you guys made sure that your people are all closed out from before? Yes. Okay, so Deborah and or Mary, if you can send me the list of the customer's name and their email address, then I can find their profiles. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Um, okay. All right, I think I got through the list. Let me end the recording. And then I will answer some questions. So if you're leaving us now in the recording, know that we went to uh, talk about specific people. <laughs>